Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to give an example of hypothesis testing for the difference in the population means. So here we have a survey of 1,000 students nationwide. So this is the sample size for nationwide. Showed a mean ACT score of 21.4. So this is the mean of a sample of 1,000 students. So, so this is X bar for nationwide. A survey of 500 Ohio scores. There is another sample here. And this is the sample size for Ohio showed a mean of 20.8 and this one is x bar for ohio if the population standard deviation in each case is assumed to be three so this one is sigma and in this case sigma is known therefore this statement here tells you that you should be using a formula that has something to do with uh, the standard normal distribution table now, can you conclude that Ohio is below the national average? So, below here can be translated as having this symbol, which is less than. And this statement is clearly referring to the alternative statement, alternative hypothesis. And here is the significance level, and you are asked to uh, implement the traditional procedure in order to test the above hypothesis okay so if you want to know which test statistic that you should be using well you have to refer to the previous slides and this is um, the aim which is to test the population means and the case that you have is independent samples normal populations where variances are known so this is the test statistic that you should be using on the second step and based on this test statistic, you will be referring to the standard normal distribution table in order to find the critical value or p-value, okay? Alright, let's go back to the question, which is this one, okay? Now, the first step is to write down the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, first step. So here we have the alternative statement. So we're going to write down with that first. Uh, mu for Ohio below than mu for nationwide. So that is what you can translate right from this statement given here. And because of that, you know that your alternative, sorry, your null hypothesis will look like this. Mu Ohio greater than or equal to mu of nationwide so this is um, one way to write down the hypothesis statements but normally i prefer this third option here where you have some sort of value on the right hand side of the of the equation or inequality okay so what we did just now this one here is option two but i always prefer to write down the alternative or and null hypothesis using option 3. So I'm going to now change the look here to option 3. So you can see that if I subtract both inequality with mu n, so this is what I'm going to get. I'm going to get h null is going to be mu Ohio minus mu nationwide greater than or equal to 0. Okay, subtract both with mu n and so you will end up with a zero value on the right hand side of the inequality statement given here yeah so again h1 is going to be with the same idea you will subtract both side with mu nationwide so you will have mu ohio minus mu nationwide less than zero okay so next is the second step which is to obtain the test statistic the formula is z and when you want to write down the formula you follow the convention given by the hypothesis statements which is ohio minus nationwide and therefore we have the sample mean for ohio minus the sample mean for nationwide again ohio minus nationwide 
and here we will have the same the variance population variance for ohio over sample size for ohio and here is population variance for nationwide over sample size for nationwide and then we just substitute all the values here we have um sample mean for ohio 20.8 minus sample mean for nationwide 21.4 minus this value here mu ohio minus mu nationwide is equal to zero because we have this statement where it says mu ohio minus mu nationwide is greater than or equal to zero so when you have the word equal which means you can substitute value zero into this position here so we have minus zero and then uh, the population variance is going to be three squared because this is standard deviation so if you want to know population variance it's going to be equal to nine nine over 500 plus nine over 1000 and so you will get the answer is negative 3.65 Okay, so next is the third step. I'm sorry. So the third step here is to um, construct the critical region and finding the critical value. So here we will have a sketch of standard normal distribution curve. At this point here is point zero. And based on the alternative statement here, we know that this is a one-sided hypothesis. Okay, and the direction here is to the left, less than zero. That means you're going to the left. Therefore, the critical region is on the left side of the distribution. Okay. And the area here is 0 0.05. Okay, similar to the significance level given in the question. Now, our job is to find what is the critical value what is the point here this is the point on the horizontal axis or this is the z value point okay as given in the table so we need to find what is the value here such that the area to the left is 0 0.05 so if you refer to the standard normal distribution table um, this is what we are looking for we are looking to find this value such that the area here is 0 0.05 and we know that the value from 0 to this side is going to be a negative value whereas value from 0 to the right is going to be a positive value you can see that the table here only has positive value of z okay there is no negative value and and we know that since the distribution is symmetric if you want to find what is this z value here what you can do is you can change the the position of area from the left to the right so you will have 0 0.05 but this time it's going to be on the right side of the distribution and your job is to find what is this value what is the the value on the horizontal axis here uh, such that the area is 0 0.05 all right um you can see now the diagram that we have here matches what is given on table 3b therefore you can directly look for 0 0.05 on the table and it's going to be inside the table because this is the area or the probability so therefore you need to find the value inside the table and you will see that this value is equally close to either 0 0.0505 or 0 0.04 0 0.0495 it doesn't matter which one do you like to pick it doesn't matter uh, if let's say you pick this value so the z value is 1.65 so this is uh, so this value 1.65 here is the value on the horizontal axis so this is 1.65 so this value uh, the probability of z less than or equal to 1.65 
is for, is this one which is 0 0.05 so that's the the idea okay now since the area here is 0 0.05 which is similar to the area that we're looking for this is a symmetric distribution this is also 0 0.05 therefore we know that this point is going to be negative 1.65 and that's the critical value okay so here is the point this is negative 1.65 critical value is equal to negative 1.65 and based on comparing the test statistic and the critical value you will be able to decide whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not so the fourth step is to decide um, the fate of our null hypothesis so if this is the point of negative 1.65 where do you think the position of negative 3.65 is going to be definitely it's going to be somewhere here okay so this could be negative 3.65 and clearly uh, the test statistic negative 3.65 falls into the critical region okay so based on that you can see that the test statistic is this one which is inside uh, the critical region it falls into the critical region therefore h null can be rejected okay now we are going to make a conclusion and the conclusion usually will relate to the alternative statement and because h null can be rejected it means that there is enough evidence to support the alternative statement so we are going to say that there is enough evidence to support that this is true the alternative statement is true and this alternative st statement here is actually comes from this uh, statement given from the question so you can use these sentences to help you uh, write down your conclusion so there is enough evidence to support that the mean ACT score for Ohio is below the national average all right i think that's all for now and i will continue with the use of p-value approach in in tackling this same example here so that will be in the next video all right thank you very much for watching